The history of Nova is split between the events that happened before the exploding sun and then everything that came after. However, very little is known about the pre-Nova history of Obrin. Most of that historical data was lost, corrupted, or destroyed in the years since humanity emerged onto this sunless world. That isn't to say though that we don't know anything. In my previous lore video, I provided a brief timeline of Nova, highlighting some of the key events to the setting. In this video, I'm going to dive deeper into the history of Oberyn before the Nova actually occurred. Keep in mind, these events are from the perspective of the people of Oberyn. There's more to the story than we'll see today, but we'll talk about that more in the next video. Let's begin by talking about the arrival into the Oberyn system. People who live on Oberyn today, in the Nova setting, did not always live there. The people who would eventually call this planet home came from outside the solar system. They came aboard massive terraforming ships. Humanity had taken to the stars from a world that had been long forgotten in search of new homes. The Oberyn system, as it would be named, was a prime candidate for settlement. And so the ships arrived in the system approximately 300 years before the system would begin to die. Of course, they had no idea that it was going to die, it just seemed like a really great place to live. There were a number of potential candidate worlds and moons in the system, and the terraforming efforts were basically split between them. However, there were two worlds in particular that really stood out compared to the rest. First was the planet Zed. This is the outermost world in the system, and it was established essentially as like a home base for the entire terraforming efforts. It wasn't the most hospitable world, but its proximity to the edge of the system was had its advantages in case they needed to escape or also detect incoming threats from outside of the system. So it was almost started as sort of the foundation of humanity's first steps into the Oberyn system. Second was Oberyn itself. This is the innermost world in the system. Its proximity to the system's sun most matched the previous living conditions of humanity. And so terraforming efforts would be able to thrive in this sort of environment. When they reached orbit, scans indicated that there were no sentient species living on the planet, but there was an abundance of flora and fauna. And so the rebuilding of Oberyn would begin. Now we lead into the discovery of the ruins on Oberyn. Early logs of the first days on Oberyn describe a world that felt wounded or scarred. There was life here, and it could certainly support the humans who had arrived, but there was a sort of heaviness to the world that was hard for the early colonists to shake. Nonetheless, the terraforming efforts did begin. Not long into this process, the ruins of old Oberyn would be discovered. Scattered across the surface were hints of a world that had once been occupied, but the original people were long since gone. Older fortifications made of stone and wood were found. Most were completely in shambles, and it appeared as little more than just piles of rubble. But there were clear signs of settlement. Tools and weapons made of crude metal were buried in these ruins, mostly bent and broken. Eventually they would find massive tomb structures that were discovered on one particular continent on the planet. The facades of these tombs seemed to indicate that whoever was inside were the remains of people of great importance. These tombs were never disturbed during the terraforming process, except for one. And that was only because the entrance had already been smashed open. Within those walls, the colonists found not a place of remembrance, but instead a laboratory. The instruments there were unrecognizable to any of the colonists, even those who were the lead researchers and scientists. They were clearly of a make far beyond anything else that could be found on the planet. Another location of note in the old ruins was an area dubbed the Sprawl. This was a swath of land that showed signs of a city that seemed to spread onwards towards the horizon. The ruins of the sprawl covered a massive portion of Oberyn's surface. At first, the colonists just believed this area to be a number of separate settlements that had been built up over time. This was given the incredibly diverse nature of the architecture that was found there. But eventually there were signs that there was some sort of through line that seemed to weave these different settlements into one whole. The site of the sprawl one day would become exactly the same place where the city of Helios in modern day Oberyn would be established. The terraforming of Oberyn. 
In total, the terraforming efforts took approximately 160 years to complete. During this time, multiple generations of humanity worked tirelessly to turn this world from the ruinous graveyard that it was into a vibrant place that they could call home. The ships that carried humanity to the system had to be cannibalized in order to begin those efforts. This was necessary, but a dangerous step, as it meant leaving Oberon would be impossible until more ships could be built. That day would not come for a very, very long time. The terraforming efforts went slower than expected due to the excessive number of ruins on the planet. Great care was given to preserve what could be saved. Despite this, records indicate the early days were filled with a number of unpredictable disasters, as if the world did not want the people there. 130 years into this process of terraforming, contact with the home-based colony world of Zed was lost. It would never be re-established. Life on pre-Nova Obrin For about 30 years, life on Obrin was peaceful. Baseline needs were met for everyone on the planet, and a sense of normalcy had sort of begun to settle in amongst the population. This is a sort of normalcy beyond the hard work of terraforming. Uh, they had they'd finally earned their, their rest. Of high priority at this point, then, was the founding of a strong scientific base on the planet. Surviving is one thing, but humanity needed to learn so much more about this new system that they would call home. Manufacturing became a top priority in order to build the tools and then hopefully eventually ships to re-establish connection with the other colony worlds. These early satellite systems were would indeed find something out there, it just wasn't what they had expected. The first flare. A massive solar flare was detected, knocking out communication systems across Oprin. When the systems came back online, a faint but noticeable energy spike was detected from the edge of the system, from Zed. The scientists of Oberyn knew that something terrible was happening, but we'll cover that in another video. And that is a rough breakdown of pre-Nova history on Oberyn. In my next video, I'll cover the Nova event itself, the death of the sun, and the fate of Zed. Until then.